Uh, welcome back to lecture 19. Uh, in continuation, uh, we'll basically uh, try to summarize uh, uh, the molecular adsorbates and the factor uh, that are controlling the molecular adsorbates. And um, if time permits, I will be also uh, discussing with you the solid liquid interface because you can also form molecular adsorbates uh, in solid uh, liquid interface. And we will also have a look at that because there certain additional interesting um, factors that are also controlling the uh, final assembly of the molecules on the surface. Now, well, what we have been uh, doing was to, to understand the molecule surface and molecule interaction, molecule, molecule interaction separately. And now, we have come to an agreement that one need to basically consider something like um, a potential energy surface which is looking more uh, structured uh, when you want to consider the so-called molecule molecule interaction into account. So, then you would basically have something known as the uh, a potential energy and then generally we called this one as the delta E um, intra. And then we said that there is also something known as the molecule uh, surface interaction. And of course, the molecule surface interaction is kind of periodic in nature, but nonetheless, due to the fact that the molecule can have many different possible orientation um, uh, on the surface, similar as molecule, molecule uh, possible orientation, uh, that potential energy surface is also much more um, structured than just having um, a simple a periodic function as we have seen in the case of atom adsorbate, um, uh, atom atomic adsorbate on surface. So, then if I would put that into account, then also you would find that they are much more structured. Um, however, there is a, a, a periodicity that something like this one can basically see. Um, so, this uh, would be basically the distance between the um, distance um, distance between the molecules, between the molecules, between the molecules. And then you clearly see that this quantity is something which we can call it as delta E inter. Yeah, So, that is the uh, inter, that is basically the molecule surface interaction and this delta E intra is basically uh, talking about the molecule molecule interaction. So, now you see how complex the potential energy surface is, the potential energy surface itself containing the molecule molecule distance, the relative orientation of the molecule with respect to other molecule, the relative orientation of the molecular axis with respect to that of the uh, surface lattice and, and so on. So, there are much more parameters, uh, much more coordinates uh, that one need to actually just consider if you want to finally understand the so-called um, adsorption energy or the interaction energy of the molecule on the surface. So, in general, in any case, the total adsorption energy uh, would basically be again a sum of the delta E inter plus the delta E intra. So, that is remaining the same, but the point is to understand the delta E inter and the delta E intra, it is a bit more complex because one need to consider more possibilities uh, to, to finally write down the uh, adsorption energy because the adsorption energy is something that you would finally say how strongly the molecule is basically binding onto the, uh, onto the surface and also within the um, as self-assembled pattern or the self-assembled add layer on the surface. And um, that is basically the case, but now you will also see that in the next example that this is clearly the point at the so-called uh, uh, molecule surface interface, but when the molecule surface interface is actually getting much more thicker, that means when you are depositing multi-layer, then the influence of the surface is actually getting much more reduced and then everything is basically going to be controlled by only the so-called delta E intra. But there, you have to also see uh, uh, some additional factors may also come in, into play that the molecule may also just start to orient in dimension as well and not simply like on the surface where we have seen that a, mol a planar molecule was just orienting with respect to the surface. Yeah? So, that is actually the, the case. 
but generally like when you start to make thicker layers everything is basically controlled by the molecule molecule interaction and the molecule surface interaction is kind of irrelevant in that case yeah so that's the kind of summary now if you put everything together i have again the same molecule the iron thylacinin molecule now you can see the molecule and this is actually um, the uh, a coverage which is much higher so it's about one monolayer coverage there you can see all the molecules are now coming together and forming this nice very well ordered pattern as you would uh, find here so the molecules are nicely arranging like this where you can see the asymmetrical orientation of the molecule is about 30 degree yeah so that's something what you can define here so this is basically the uh, lattice and this is somewhat the orientation of the molecule and this is about uh, 30 degree for example yeah so the approximately 30 degrees the asymmetrical orientation of the molecule so that orientation comes due to the fact that this orientation actually allows the molecules to interact with the maximum surface area because the intermolecular interaction in this particular case is one of all uh, type of interaction and therefore the molecule always try to arrange in a way where there is maximum overlap between the molecular um, uh, between the molecule so that's the basic key of this yeah now but the point is in the stm image so this is again a scanning tunneling micrograph image so there you cannot see the details but using some additional experimental parameters you can clearly determine what is the adsorption geometry of the molecule but then it turns out to be that not every molecule is basically adsorbing at the same type of adsorption geometry or same type of site instead it also has something like a supercell which is basically um, uh, 1 2 3 uh, it's a 3 by 6 supercell what the molecule is basically forming yeah because you would find that this particular molecule is adsorbed at a given site but when the molecule is actually arranging in the lattice you can see that the center atom you can pay attention to the atom at the center is basically just moving away from the bridge site because here the central atom was actually at the bridge site was at the bridge site was at the bridge site and as the molecule moves along the lattice you would find that the bridge site is basically just changing and then finally uh, at the seventh molecule the molecule retain the original adsorption geometry as the one at, at one position yeah so that means there is again a super periodicity along both the crystallographic direction and along the other crystallographic direction the super periodicity is basically about three times of the molecular lattice and along the other direction it is about basically six times of the molecular lattice so it is not just that we can say that this is the unit cell that defines the molecule it is indeed the other red uh, dashed line represent basically the molecular lattice so that means uh, what is going on at the interface is even more complex um, than what you would imagine in the case of atomic adsorbates but nonetheless it is uh, kind of an extremely interesting topic to investigate and using microscopy like you see here one can understand things at the at the atomic scale and that will actually just help you in, in understanding a greater detail or, or and, and kind of clearly the molecule surface interface so this would be kind of a complete picture of the molecular adsorbate on a on the surface or directly at the interface now what i want to also do uh, uh, okay before that uh, what I would like to also show you are some additional factors that are going to actually just control the molecular self assembly on surface so uh, so far what we have seen is that uh, it is basically controlled by the molecule molecule orientation and also the molecule surface orientation but that's not the case because you would also find that in certain cases or in, in many cases in the case of molecule that depending on the coverage of molecule that you have on the surface here for example I have 0.7 monolayer coverage then I have increased the coverage to 0.8 monolayer then one monolayer so depending on the coverage you would find different type of pattern so you can see here the first pattern it is again a thylacinin molecule but the central metal atom is uh, cobalt in this case that's the only difference but what you find is that here the molecule again orients somewhat 
like what we have seen in the previous case. But when you increase the coverage, you find extremely interesting pattern. So you can see here uh, a very interesting pattern is basically emerging. And then when you uh, increase the concentration or the coverage very, very high, then the molecules are actually going down to something like an extremely close packed uh, pattern. So the point here what I want to mention is again it has to something to do with the so-called possible molecular orientation and the uh, stabilization energy or the so-called interaction energy through the molecule molecule interaction is the key for it um, but um, and, and that you can clearly control by the concentration. So depending on how much molecule you dope or, or how much molecule you deposit on the surface you can actually just uh, decide what type of um, art layer pattern that you would like to have. So that's something uh, uh, quite uh, controllable in the case of molecule. Um, but but in, in some cases there are only subtle differences uh, between these energies and therefore like control is, is not as easy as one would imagine. But if there is a, a clear difference between the different minimas uh, in energy, then one can easily control these patterns on surface using concentration for example. Or in some cases one can also use temperature as a control parameter. Uh, you can also just um, generate different type of molecular pattern on the surface. Now, um, I would also like to discuss with you a little bit um, away from the surface of so what happens if I would deposit uh, molecules in a multilayer. Of course, I am not going to consider in my class something like uh, several layers. So that is something we are not really considering at least in the microscopy part. But what I am going to show you here is actually a coverage which is 1.7 monolayer. Yeah? So this is again the ion thalocyanin on silver 111 uh, surface. So it is the same example as you have seen in the previous slide. Here I have basically the first layer, then the second layer and the third layer and so on. Yeah? So this is clearly like a, a part where I have an overlap between the first layer and the second layer. So here you can see in the first layer clearly the molecules are arranging like this um, which we have already seen. It is nice. So they are basically just doing this nice compact packing um, of the of the add layer in the first layer. And now in the second layer, what you find interesting is that microscopically you are unable to image the entire part of the molecule. So that is what is shown here in this scheme. What you find is that you are only able to just see some part of the molecule. Yeah? So that actually gives rise to an impression that they are actually just kind of overlapping. But that is not really possible that two molecules just overlap like that unless and until they have some kind of a tilted orientation. So if you have a tilted orientation and when you look from the top, they are basically appearing like one molecule is overlapping on top of the other. Yeah? So then what happens is that in the first layer and in the second layer, you would find that the molecular orientation with respect to the vessel plane of the surface is actually changing. So in the first layer, all the molecules are planar. Uh, with respect to the surface and in the second layer, of course, the molecule is planar but the molecular orientation with respect to surface is not any more planar like this. It is basically getting tilted with respect to the vessel plane of the surface. That is interesting. So the molecule is getting tilted and, and this is kind of a side view and this is the top view. You can clearly see in the top view that how the molecular orientation is basically happening. Now, the interesting thing that you would ask, why is basically suddenly the molecule is changing their orientation? Why not just the molecule pack in the same way as you would actually just see it in the first layer? Well, that is an obvious question, but the interesting thing is that when the molecules start to pack in the multilayer, they start to increase the so-called molecule-molecule interaction. And for molecule like thalocyanin, which has actually a strong pi electron cloud around the molecule, it is very well known that the molecules are actually some kind of uh, having a strong pi pi interaction. So if you want to maximize the pi pi interaction, what the molecule does is they tilt themselves in order to maximize the so-called molecule molecule interaction, which is again a pi pi interaction, Van der Waals interaction, but they try to maximize it. So how do you clearly say that this is the case? We can understand that 
if you look at the bulk structure of uh, this kind of thalocyanin molecule. So, this is a basically the packing of copper thalocyanin crystal that means the three dimensional crystal of copper thalocyanin molecules and there people find different type of packing of copper which is known as alpha copper, beta copper PCO, uh, epsilon copper PC these are just names and there they are all basically having some kind of tilted orientation but the slight differences in the relative tilt that is the only difference between the different phases but in all the cases what you have effectively is the so called pi pi interaction and to maximize the pi pi interaction the molecule actually just get tilted with respect to each other and they pack. And you clearly see when I form the multi layer so that means already in the second layer the first uh, the second layer molecule already is tilting with respect to the surface. So, that is something you can already see and if I would basically grow molecules into the multi layer then their tilt would become larger and then it will basically just remain like in the bulk packing. Yeah. So, that is the connection between the interface and the bulk packing so they are always related but at the interface there is a strong influence of the surface and therefore the molecule uh, surface interaction prevails at that point um, uh, at the interface and therefore the molecules are actually just looking more or less flat adsorbed on the surface. But uh, as you go thicker and thicker the molecular orientation is changing and they start to basically follow the bulk packing. So, that is the interesting aspect that one can basically see here. Now, um, if you would basically uh, want to, to finally make a comparison of the solid atom interface and also the molecule uh, uh, solid interface uh, like we see it right now. Uh, this is of course a qualitative picture where one can kind of relate the typical relation between the adsorption energy of an atom like adsorbate on surface or like a molecule like adsorbate on the surface. So, the interesting aspect about the atom like adsorbate on the surface is that they are strongly bonded to the surface. So, like we have already seen so they are typically bonded strongly onto the surface. So, in many cases you would even find chemisorption would happen and because of that there is a strong strong chemical interaction between the molecule and sorry the atom and the surface. Your typical binding energy or the so called adsorption energy is several uh, uh, orders of magnitude higher than that of a typical molecule surface adsorbate. Yeah? So, that is what we try to show here on a relative energy scale uh, where 0 is actually a non interacting adsorbate on surface that means an adsorbate which is really far away. But as you put this uh, the adsorbate on the surface so they start to interact basically in a in a strong way. So, obviously you would find that the atom like adsorbate has the highest binding energy or adsorption energy on, on surface yeah that is because of the true uh, chemical interactions uh, between them and that actually as we have already seen in, in, in a few cases it can actually vary from a few electron volt for example. So, you can actually have it in the order of a typical chemical bond like 2, 3, 4 electron volt is the typical order. But now when you actually just take atom like molecules. So, these are actually molecules uh, that would basically just go on to the surface, but you can see a carbon monoxide would uh, adsorb on the surface like this yeah? and that is also looking like an atom like adsorbate because they are small and then their adsorption energy is also very high because they also would form a strong um, chemical uh, bond or, or some kind of a chemisorption, I am just calling it a CS chemisorption between the atom and the surface and in that case also you would find that the energy uh, the so called adsorption energy is actually uh, uh, in the order of a few electron volt. Yeah? So, that is the, the point that you need to consider. But when the molecular size increases so that is something that uh, what I have here depicted as a diameter of the molecule. So, of course, the diameter of the molecule is quite hard to define, but it is typically something to do with the area of the molecule that is in fact interacting uh, with the surface. Yeah? So, for a benzene molecule the hexagonal area itself is the diameter of the molecule um, and for molecule like this it is typically a bit hard to 
to understand depending on whether the molecule goes like this or the molecule stands up and so on. But something like we can roughly say the area of contact of the molecule is something we can call it as a diameter. And now that is something uh, quite uh, important when it comes to the bigger molecule. And the point what I want to show here is that as you go to bigger molecule, of course, the diameter basically increases. And you would also find that the adsorption energy is basically decreasing yeah, with respect to a non-adsorbed state. So that means atom-like adsorbates or atom-like molecular adsorbates are having a very, very high adsorption energy truly because they do some kind of chemisorption on the surface. It is in the order of a few electron volt. But when it goes to molecule, as you have already seen in the case of thylocyanin, um, the interaction energy, uh, it is of course a rough calculation that I have done, but the interaction energy is typically in the order of a few hundreds of milli electron volt. Yeah? So just to give an analogy, so it is not very quantitative, so 100 milli electron volt and typically here uh, you have something like 3, 4 electron volt. So that is the, the typical order that we can, we can talk about. Yeah? So, uh, and then uh, people generally call it, it is actually something like a quasi epitaxy. It is not really an epitaxy because epitaxy has to really do something with the surface. Here, molecule is not really necessarily following the surface. So, then you cannot call it really as an epitaxy. Therefore, in some cases, people also refer to it as a quasi epitaxy. Yeah? Now, there is also one more interesting factor or a parameter that you can plug in that is basically the strain that we talked about. So in the case of um, atom-like adsorbates, although we talked about a variety of strain, you might notice that the strain that if you would calculate basically in the case of molecular adsorbates uh, is much, much, much larger than in the case of atom-like adsorbates. Yeah? The reason is very simple. The lattice mismatch of a molecular adsorbate with that of the um, surface is enormous, is very large yeah? because you have to consider the entire molecular dimension and the lattice of the, of the surface is basically very, very small. So that is the reason why you would find that the so-called strain is in fact increasing in this fashion. Uh, it is a qualitative measure uh, and then typically these kind of molecular epitaxies kind of strained Van der Waals epitaxy. And uh, within this itself, uh, Van der Waals epitaxy or the one where uh, things, the molecules are stabilized by Van der Waals interactions are the one with the lowest um, uh, adsorption energy. But if you have like strong hydrogen bondings or ionic bonds that would play uh, inside, then you could also just get into something like 1000 milli electron volt. So that is actually possible. Yeah. So that is the range what we are talking about. So like Van der Waals epitaxy, typically a few hundreds of milli electron volt. If it is hydrogen bond, you can uh, reach up to uh, uh, an electron volt. Uh, and if it is basically strong um, uh, chemical bonds that is forming between the adsorbate and the surface, then it is basically 3 to 4 uh, electron volt or a, a few electron volt is possible. So that is the order of energy that we are talking about. But in generally, you can kind of understand um, the, the, the solid atom interface and the solid molecule interface using this kind of a qualitative uh, plot. Yeah? Uh, you can also just uh, read this article. Uh, it is an old uh, review article. Nonetheless, it uh, gives a, a good summary about uh, molecular adsorbates on surface. You can um, get uh, a, a certain important uh, aspects about the preparation and, and the energetics of molecular adsorbates on surface in this uh, particular um, uh, review article. Yeah? Now, what I want to actually discuss with you is the molecular art layers that are formed at solid liquid interface. So this is slightly different because so far what we have been discussing is actually molecular adsorbates on solid surface uh, and this was actually kind of a solid state Philip. But now what you can also do, so this is basically you are seeing is a scanning tunneling microscope itself which is capable of imaging molecules inside a liquid. So that is the point. So now what you have additionally is you have the surface, this is the surface um, and then you have the molecular adsorbates, you can see here they are packing and then you have the, uh, atom, uh, the, the a sharp, atomically sharp tip of the scanning tunneling microscope uh, 
and it basically scans on the surface and try to image the molecule inside the liquid. Yeah, so that is the interesting aspect here. So, in this particular case, of course, molecules do self assemble on the surface, but interesting fact is that the molecules are actually um, the, the, the solvent that we use is actually going to play, the concentration of the solvent is actually going to play. Uh, and the nature of the solvent is going to play a strong role in basically just getting the, uh, the right type of molecular assembly on the surface. Uh, just to keep it in mind that one need to have like uh, these kind of low dielectric constant or low vapor pressure liquids typically to do the study. Uh, this we will revisit uh, when we study the scanning tunneling microscope, so then you will understand it a bit more uh, in detail. But right now I just want to tell that the typical uh, solvents that we are going to use, so the so called liquid phase medium that we are using is actually fatty acids, so fatty alcohol or phenyl octane, these kind of alkyl uh, chains are we are using typically for the uh, as a solvent or the liquid medium. Now, let us have a look, uh, this is very simple, so uh, some STM images of uh, different type of molecules. Uh, that we can form in the solid liquid interface. So, you can see depending on the type of functional group and also where you place the functional group here, you can see it is a it is a para dicarboxylic um, benzene and this is a meta dicarboxylic benzene. So, depending on the position of the carboxylic group, you can see they are arranging either in a linear fashion or in the case some kind of a zigzag fashion that is basically allowed by the symmetry of the molecule. So, you can nicely image molecules at the interface. Now, the interesting thing is again here this is actually the trimacic acid molecule which we have already discussed and we said that this molecule can form either a dimeric hydrogen bonding or a trimeric hydrogen bonding, yeah? trimeric hydrogen bonding or dimeric hydrogen bonding. So, these are the two ways that the uh, trimacic acid can interact with respect to each other and depending on this interaction, you can either form a flower structure or a chicken wire structure. But now, the interesting aspect what I want to show you is like all this imaging is basically done inside a fatty acid. Yeah. Now, depending on the type of fatty acid that you choose, yeah, either you choose actually long chain, really long chain fatty acids like octanoic acid or nonanoic acid, then you would find that the most favorable mm, favorable pattern is basically chicken wire pattern. And if you would use basically low, uh, a smaller alkyl chain uh, length fatty acids like pentanoic acid, hexanoic acid and so on, then you would find that the flower structure is actually the most preferred one. And somewhere in between the so called borderline uh, between these two, the heptanoic acid, you find mix of both chicken wire and flower pattern. So, you clearly see the nature of solvent is playing a very, very crucial role in this case in controlling the type of add layer pattern that you form on the surface. Yeah? It is all to do with the length of the chain because in the case of chicken wire, it is also observed that the molecules, the, the solvent molecules itself also get trapped inside these kind of pores yeah? and that is being stabilized by the long chain is the origin of this different type of pattern. But you, in important aspect what I want to say is like the nature of solvent. Now, what you also can do is you can basically increase the concentration. Now, what I am doing is I take again octanoic acid, uh, trimacic acid, but what is expected is that this molecule only form uh, this chicken wire pattern. Yeah? So, what is pattern in octanoic acid as per the previous uh, uh, literature. But now interesting thing, by doing sonication, so you, you mix a certain amount of molecule inside the solution, make a saturated solution. And now, if you sonicate it for longer time, that is what is given here 0 hour, 2 to 4 hour sonication, 4 to 5 hour, 5 to 7 hour sonication. Then what we find is that the concentration of the molecule can be increased if you do increasing the sonication. And then what we find interesting is that when you increase the concentration of the molecule in this liquid, in this liquid phase, then we suddenly find that you can find both the flower and the chicken wire pattern. So, that means concentration is also playing an important role in controlling the add layer pattern. So, finally, what I also want to say is that again, 
this is the, the, the trimesic acid molecule which is worked out in octanoic acid. So, the f uh, um, octanoic acid and what is uh, interesting here depending on the temperature at which you image the molecule you also find that you can basically find the chicken wire and the flower structure depending on the temperature. So, finally, what I want to say like when you do the solid liquid interface, it is not just the, the geometry or the shape of the molecule matter, it also matters the concentration, the, 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 um, uh, the, the solvent in which you are imaging the molecule or the temperature at which you are imaging the molecule all actually plays a role and therefore, you have actually much more important factors that are controlling the self-assembly of molecule in the case of molecule uh, solid liquid interface. Yeah? So, that is in general about the molecular adsorbates and in the next class, we will uh, look at, at these examples again using different kind of microscopy and we try to understand additional aspects about these kind of adsorbates. Yeah? Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention.